this is Heck, and Heck is a Staffordshire Terrier mix, and he's got some uh, insecurities. And when he gets insecure, he starts acting a little bit aggressive as his way of, I think it's a defense mechanism. And so basically, uh, I was just going through another exercise and he didn't react to it very well, so we pulled the plug right away. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to, you can t uh, do some hand targeting and teach your dog to move around towards your hand. Now, when I do this, I'm gonna kind of flash my hand and I'm gonna keep it at a diagonal. There we go, buddy, sit. There we go, we like that energy. Yeah. So um, basically, the other exercise I was gonna show is a way of kind of um, asking a dog to leave the area, but it's a little bit more uh, assertive than I think we, we, I'd like to use with him. So what I'm gonna do is I want him just basically to touch my hand with his nose. I put a treat there. Now I switch hands, I'm gonna do it to the side. Didn't go for it, that's right. That's a little play. There we go. Now when I do this, I don't move the hand once I flash it. I move the treat to the hand once I flash it. Yes, we hear you out there, buddy. There we go. And that jumpiness that he has uh, is, I'm pretty sure he's got cortisol in his blood. So as a result, he's kind of a little twitchy. And you can tell he's a little twitchy because that sudden jerky movement. All right, sit. Sit. Target. Target. So that hand, that flash is, we usually like to do it really fast, but because he's been struck in the past, uh, he's a little bit gun shy with that. So I'm gonna move a little bit slower. Target. Target. Whenever possible, you always wanna get the dog to come to you as opposed to going towards the dog, especially if you're doing with a nervous dog or an anxious dog. So I'm gonna move a little bit further away. And get some reward. This is pretty good stuff, huh, buddy? So if he doesn't go towards that, pull your hand back. There we go. Target. I, I jumped the gun a little bit there. I should have waited for you to touch. There you go. So basically the idea is eventually, at first when you do it, you want to flash your hand within a couple inches and, and, and as soon as he looks at it, you go ahead and give, put the treat there and say the word target when he touches it, uh, when he licks up the treat. Uh, eventually you can say target and the dog will run over and put his hand there. So this way if he's, if he's somewhere you don't want him to be, somebody else in the house can say target, move around. See, listen, let me do it again. Target. Target. Now, this is uh, just a completely uh, unrelated, but because he's been struck in the past, he's a little bit gun shy if he has a big sweeping motion. So I'm gonna show you real quick as a little bonus how you can fix that. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break down that activity into small, into small steps and help him practice it while I'm providing a positive reinforcement, in this case, the treat. So I'm gonna use my right hand as the, as the striking hand. I'm not actually gonna strike him, but I'm gonna recreate it a little bit. So I'm letting him chew on the treat and I'm moving my hand very slowly towards his head. And I'm doing it slow, so it's not, it's recreating the motion, but it's not recreating because I'm not making contact and it's not that fast movement. So I want to be kind of looking at it. And when, I, when I'm doing this, I'm taking one of the treats, I'm smashing it so it's flat like a pancake. So it takes him about three or four nibbles before he can actually eat uh, all the treat. And I've only moved my hand towards him when he's nibbling on it. Once the treat's gone, I stop moving. So now I can move a little bit faster. And he's not quite cowering. I don't think he's cowering so much as uh, you're nibbling a little bit hard, buddy. Um, let's go ahead and just change it a little bit. So you see now he's not retracting, even though he's seeing it coming. So if you have a dog that was struck in the past, uh, it's just natural for it to cower, and that's okay. Oh, it's not okay. We don't want to. We prefer this why we use positive reinforcement only. But eventually, I have to go a little faster, faster, and he's not ducking his way, uh, ducking away. So if you have a dog that was uh, abused or, or punished with physical corrections, and they do kind of get that gunshot, we want to help remove that because otherwise, what do people do? They just reach over to pet the dog and pitching, petting on its head. Well, if the dog thinks you're going to strike it, and it's a little kid who does it really fast, you might have the dog turn around and nip and bite, and it didn't mean to. It's just a confusing situation. So, all right, let's do, uh, we'll do that one more time. 
And so now I'm pretty much at the same speed he would if I was striking him. And you see he's not running. So now, absent a treat, uh, was that a target or was that a disagreement? Like, I missed that one. I'll have to watch that on, on slow-mo. Let's do one more target. Let's do a long one, see if we can get a good long one for you. Nope. Oh, there we go. Do another one. It's like you mixed your, your lessons in the middle of this video. Now I'm a little bit confused. So the way I'm karate chopping is a little bit too far away from him. So if you, when you're doing this at home, if you karate chop too far away and he won't come to it, pull it away and then refresh it again. Sit. Doesn't have to sit. I would like to get up out of a sit and, and uh, take a step towards it to end this video. There you go. Well, this is Heck. He's a little bit nervous. You just saw that little twitchiness. And so that's, again, a, a good illustration why we want to use positive methods of correcting him uh, as opposed to doing anything physically. Uh, heck, sit. You sit, you sit like Heck, Heck. This is Heck, and this is how you can teach uh, your dog a hand target or a targeting exercise.